Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. For those who don't know me, and I know a number of the faces within the audience, I'm Michael O'Connell, the Director of Operational Police Support and Analysis, based at Interpol's headquarters in Lyon in France. I'm pleased to be here today to provide an insight into Interpol's use of forensic technologies for tackling the terrorist threat. Last month, the world was shocked by the explosion of a bomb at the Erewhon Shrine that killed 20 people in Bangkok. Generally considered as a safe place for tourists from all around the world, yet even Thailand now experiences some of the wider international terror risks. The investigation in cases like this has to deal with many questions. What are the reasons for their act of aggression? Are there any groups involved? What methods have been used? And mainly, who are the persons responsible for the attack? But this can be complicated further if the offender is foreign, or the suspect has left the country and is hiding elsewhere. What if he is using a fake identity and travelling with forged documents? One of the suspects in this case we see used a fake Turkish passport. Can he be responsible for other attacks behind the borders? How best to inform other countries about the investigation and mainly about the threat that the person can present? All these questions were the reason why a hundred years ago the idea of an international police organisation was born. Today, Interpol is uh, linking the police in 190 countries around the world, allowing the officers to communicate in a fast and secure manner. We are creating the policing tools and services in order to facilitate the everyday work of you all. Our databases are accessible via a secure network called I-247 by authorised users in all your member countries. We encourage you to extend this network beyond your national central bureaus so your investigation could be faster and more effective. This way you may be able to find out if the person is using stolen or lost documentation to hide their identity, what is the real identity of the person, or if he or she is wanted internationally. The growing threat of ISIS and other uh, terror groups which are using the foreign terrorist fighters for expanding their terror and crime activities, as well as general increase in transnational crime, is challenging the national security and policing capabilities in ways that haven't been experienced before. According to the United Nations, about 1,000 Southeast Asian nationals are believed to have become foreign terrorist fighters in the past nine months. And the number of FTFs from this region is a rising trend. Interpol's Counter-Terror Command has undertaken detailed analysis of this threat with specific focus on Asia with the publication of their report on the foreign terrorist fighters in Syria and Iraq from Asia. These individuals could and do pose a great security threat due to their military capabilities and access to financial resources. There is a concern that upon their return, recruited, trained individuals could carry out attacks in their respective countries. So what are we doing? Interpol has worked in detail with the United Nations to design in enablers to, to permit us all to work in a more collaborative way to tackle the threat. The United Nations Resolution 2178, adopted by its Security Council last September, specifically mentioned Interpol and its databases to be used in order to identify, monitor and prevent the transit of foreign terrorist fighters and encourage countries to deepen their international cooperation. It's important now more than ever to effectively collect, process and share the data related to the persons that are subjects of investigations in order to identify them. All this in accordance with the national norms and legislation of your countries. Without close cooperation with you, our member countries, we cannot do much in order to join the dots, identify the threat and dismantle this global terror network. 
During the next few days, we would like to share with you our experiences and show you the possibilities forensics represent in your everyday fight against the terror threat. Over the past 10 years, Interpol has developed proven secure biometric capabilities. Through our automated fingerprint identification system, AFIS, we have linked 182 countries together and hold in excess of 228,000 fingerprint records. Yet only 3% of this data is from the Asian region. That's an important point which I'll just reiterate, but only 3% of that data is from your region. Through our DNA system, we have linked 73 countries with almost 156,000 profiles, which led to 600 proven identifications over the past 10 years. But again, limited, if any, use of this capability by the Asian region. Through our firearms tracing and ballistic forensic capabilities, IARMS and IBIN, we have in excess of 1.4 million records. Again, unfortunately, the region makes little, if any, use of this capability. We are also building a new facial recognition database with records in excess of 250,000 profiles of use in tracking and tracing capabilities. But even though we have this dynamic, innovative biometric capability, we have a challenge in front of us. The challenge is to make the countries you make most use of it. It is only by using the biometrics and forensics in an integrated and dynamic way that we can truly make a difference. You can make an impact on terror and change its impact on our future and the futures of your own communities. We saw this in the past through our proactive use in specialist operations, worldwide events and border control. Increasing the forensic capabilities must be our common responsibility, for that's why we're here. We will see on the following slides how this approach can change the investigation and facilitate more dynamic police work. In 2014, significant military actions within Africa led to increased arrests and detentions of suspected terrorists. However, the detention facilities they were being held in did not have any biometric capabilities. So we believed identifications of high value terror suspects were being missed. We deployed our biometric team to the Malayan Central Jail and undertook the profiling of their detainees. Within that prisoner population was a rich source of investigative opportunity in the fight against terror that had not been identified or exploited. Of particular significance was the positive identification of a 25-year-old male who was hiding behind a false identity. He was one of the terror suspects wanted for the Algerian oil refinery attacks in 2013. Without Mali showing their desire to innovate and proactively allow us to support them in the use of biometrics to help in the fight against terror, we would not be celebrating these successes. It also again highlights a significant security gap in the world's ongoing anti-terror efforts as there remains hundreds if not thousands of prisoners in jails around the world not pro properly identified because of a lack of training, equipment or awareness of the value that biometrics can have. So moving from Africa we come to Europe. January this year saw it witness the Charlie Hebdo terror attack in Paris. Through their dynamic response to the incident and through investigative follow-up, including the real-time sharing of forensic intelligence with Interpol, we assisted them in identifying traces from the 35 recovered weapons to firearm intelligence reports we had in our IARM system from Belgium. This led directly to the suppliers of these weapons and another terror group in Belgium. We also ensure the routine use of biometrics through our tracing and alert system known as Interpol's notices. These have particular value against the, the foreign terrorist threat in helping to track and trace vulnerable missing persons suspected of travelling to theatres like Syria or Iraq, identifying deceased foreign fighters 
and alerting us to the potential use of their identities by others to facilitate their global travel and the threat. Also, the identification of wanted terror suspects through our red notices. In Interpol, we believe that only through coordinated effort and close cooperation can we improve our response and ability to make the world a safer place. We've delivered on our promise to make available the best forensic and biometric capabilities to help you in the fight against terror. Their routine and dynamic use in live incidents and investigations and during operations can significantly increase the security in your country and this region. The Southeast Asian and Pacific region has a huge potential for changing the security situation far away from its borders. We would like to help you to realise your own opportunities from Interpol's forensic and biometric capabilities. You're living in an, innov in an innovative region with ambitious use of technology, but still not using your capabilities in full at an international level. For example, Europe provides 26 times more fingerprint data and 623 times more DNA data than Asia. Interpol created strong rules for the processing of data based on the requests and recommendations of the member countries. Data protection and high security is very important when exchange of such sensitive data is involved and it's at the heart of our capabilities. Importantly, member countries can keep their ownership of data in each moment. It, you, decide on the deletion and retention of that data based on your national rules and legislation. We all recognise now that crime does not respect borders. Interpol is your partner, helping solve the problems of borderless crimes between the police forces around the world so you can communicate easy, find support for your operations, make searches of biometrics and forensics data in real time. Helping you seek the information about wanted persons, warn the others about the threat, as well as building your own capabilities to fight terrorism. In order to better support the Southeast Asian and Pacific region, Interpol is cooperating with governments and other international organisations. As we've heard, and thanks to the Departments of Foreign Affairs and Trade and Development in Canada, we are carrying out this two-year project capacity building programme to foster maritime security in Malaysia. This programme aims to improve maritime piracy and armed robbery related investigation, as well as to support increased investigation resources, specialised forensic capabilities and improve information sharing amongst national law enforcement agencies. The same agency financed the second project in the region which we heard about this morning um, with regards to the programme on improving counter-terrorism and international collaboration in ASEAN member states. The programmes have brought together actors across the law enforcement community, key decision makers, investigators, forensic experts and National Central Bureau officers. Interpol in co cooperation with the European Union and ASEAN is also managing another programme in this region that will be launched next month in Jakarta. This project covers Southeast Asian member states and will include border operations and trainings, again with forensic modules. As you saw, there's a lot of work done already, but we won't and can't stop there. We want to assist you in improving regional and national security in the South Southeast Asian and Pacific region, because we know we can. There's a lot that needs to be done. The National Police, Counter-Terror, Immigration, Border Control and Forensic Authorities need to look beyond local solutions to tackle the international threat. The use of forensic and biometric capabilities through Interpol will increase your capabilities. We've created a flexible interface that is adjustable to all national infrastructure and legislative requirements. By your partnering with your national central bureaus and Interpol, we can better protect our local, regional and international communities from threat. My biometric teams at Interpol have designed and now we seek to implement a regional biometric strategy. 
We will continue to work in direct partnership with ASEANAPOL and ASEAN to try and empower the change that is needed to make wider use of these capabilities in the region. To establish the roadmap and implementation plan for this strategy, we have three regional events that are being hosted here at our Global Centre for Innovation. In August, we had the regional trainings on the use of firearm forensic capabilities. Today, we have our Southeast Asian and Pacific Forensic Seminar, and in October, the Firearms Forensics Symposium. I encourage any and all of you who have an interest for change in the use of biometrics to better enable our response to the terror threat to join with us at these events and in partnering with regional bodies and national entities to close the gap and let biometrics once again prove their value in protecting the public from harm. Let's show how biometrics can be used in an innovative way to tackle the terrorist threat. Thank you very much for your interest and attention.